when Trophy Ice frontman John Floriani renamed his solo project to his own name in 2019. Less than a year after his band Trophy Eyes put out their sophomore album, he chose to let us all in more closely than ever before. And while his work in Trophy Eyes isn't impersonal, this new era of solo work provides an intimacy to Floriani's state of mind that we've rarely seen in quite the same depth before. After releasing two singles, Echoes and Oh Brother, he released an eight track, 26 minute long mini LP entitled Sin. In this video I'll discuss why I believe that title is so important to this project, but first off, let's define the concept itself. What does it truly mean to sin? At a base level, crimes are your offenses against the laws of man. Sins are your crimes against God. They're the mindsets and actions that count against all of your good in the afterlife, potentially halting your progress past the pearl encrusted gates of heaven. Commandments are the written rules of your God, and when you break those, you have sinned. In certain religious groups, sins are irredeemable, in others, confessing your crimes and admitting your wrongdoings is enough to absolve you. Now, John Floriani is not reporting to any commandments or religious texts specifically, but rather the sins he documents on this record are the ones committed against himself, the breaches of his own moral code. The record opens with Oh Brother, where John sings about the end of his relationship with his brother. In an interview around the time the album was released, John spoke about this song and said that his brother had always had a hard time trying to do right by the people around him. Those who want to help him become a better man. But in the end, John was the only one left loving him. Until even the connections of their shared blood wasn't enough to make that relationship worthwhile. Oh brother, is that goodbye? It's John Floriani prioritizing his own mental health over a family member who isn't returning the effort. The lines, I'm the only one who understands, and we were dealt a bad hand, but I made good with what you couldn't do. Also say to me that he sees the same issues in himself, but that he's making progress where his brother failed to make any. Echoes is arguably the opposite. Where Oh Brother is about love running out, Echoes shows that time can bring around a separation in a relationship, even though they wish it didn't. As the song focuses on the home John and his girlfriend, who was originally from Texas, she had in Sydney for a short while before she had to move back stateside. After she left, John was stuck with the memory of their time together and the furniture they shared. Just an empty house that had until recently been their home, even if only for a short while. Those echoes aren't the silence that comes around after a relationship fails, but rather they're the memories that keep bouncing around their heads during their time apart. Furthermore, both Ugly Love and Don't Wait Up are about John's imposter syndrome, especially in that relationship with his girlfriend. He just can't bring himself to realize that she likely loves him because of who he is, not despite it. He's worried about disappointing the woman he loves so deeply and wants to try desperately not to let her down, but yet can't seem to help himself from staying out all night or flying away on tour. Ugly loves, I can see the city from my window seat. I watch my life go on without me. Shows how distance John feels from his own life and the impact he has on the people in it. Like if he were no longer there, nothing would change. The second verse on Don't Wait Up may also be my favorite on the whole album as I was waiting for an ADHD diagnosis and medication for it when this album released. And the words, what if the pills make me numb? How are you gonna love me if I'm just not myself? What if there's nothing wrong? Maybe I've just been an asshole all along. Mirrored the anxieties I was going through at the time. The track Cocaine on the surface feels like it's just a song about John's drug habits but I think it's something more. This song's saying that these feelings, I'm gonna change the world, baby, wait and see. They're about finally being satisfied with his life, with where he's going, and that he believes in himself, and that sensation is as good as the way these drugs make you feel. The faux success that these substances can provide feel like the true success he's experiencing. These drugs can make you feel like you're on top of the world, but when you are on top of the world, you don't seek those highs anywhere near as much. Much like Ono Brother, John draws parallels in I Don't Want To Be Here Either, 
but this time between a friend who's in a dark place in their life, struggling with depression and existential issues. This song is almost directed at himself as much as it is about someone he knows. Because logically, Floriani knows that his friend thinks too negatively of themselves. But he finds it hard to see the same is equally true for him, sometimes relying on his empathy to convince himself that he does make others happy. I Don't Wanna Be Here Either is one of the three most introspective songs on the album, with direct religious interpolations. Another being Repent, which is thematically the most relevant. Directly tying into the themes of absolution and sin, it documents a memory from John's past, a dark night, in the rain, where he knocked out a man that he thought had hurt his girlfriend. A moment of wrath to protect his girl. The Repent in this title, a payment for your crimes, doesn't just refer to the man John knocked out, paying for what he did to John's partner, but to himself, as he lies awake, cursing at his hands, for what they've done to his eyes. Before the Devil Knows I'm Dead dives into John's anxieties about his life and explores how his girlfriend's Catholic views clash with his own. He said about the song, It's just a thought that popped into my head. Does it bother her that I won't go to what you think is your afterlife? I wouldn't be there. Well, kind of repenting at the same time, I guess. This idea that John will have to sneak into heaven, as if he has wronged the world so deeply that those flaws will follow him into the afterlife, is paramount to this album's central idea. That he is incapable of seeing the good in himself as better than the sum of the bad in his past. Although the last track certainly implies that he doesn't believe in a god, I truly can't know to what extent he actually is religious. Although John has said, I grew up Catholic, but would consider myself a nihilist, or at least an atheist or agnostic atheist. Existential pagan, I don't know. Whatever you please. So maybe he doesn't even know himself, but the stories told in his words on this album document the sins John Floriani sees in himself, and through that lens these eight tracks are his confession, and this record is his absolution. Every time you choose to spin this record, you find yourself on the other side of the booth, you hear his story and reconcile him with his sin. Thank you for exploring Sin by John Floriani with me. If you found this video interesting, make sure to like the video and subscribe with notifications on for more like it. You can join the community and discuss this video on the Discord, that link is in the description and the pinned comment. If you found issues with this video, please let me know. I had help with the script this week from Aleshan, uh, his feedback and additions really helped out. If you want to support the channel, you can buy a shirt. Last week I covered Take This To Your Grave by Fallout Boy. The feedback on that video was amazing, it'll be linked at the end if you missed it. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.